Hello, I'm Kirk Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in beautiful Wesley Chapel, Florida, and we are going through the book of Romans. We're currently in Romans chapter 9, uh, and we've been going through Romans for quite a while now, hitting just a verse or maybe a few verses at a time, and just exploring everything that God has for us in his word, especially here in the book of Romans, though we often touch on other parts of, of the Bible as we do this. Uh, if you've missed our previous videos, you can catch them on our YouTube channel, the YouTube channel for Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, or you can go to faithwesleychapel.com. Uh, that's faithwesleychapel.com, and that's our website. And uh, if you go into the About Us section, you can find the blog, and there are all the posts for the, the Roman series, as well as other series that we've had. Uh, like First Peter, and we did a, an ex exploration through the Old Testament and some other things like that. But uh, so I encourage you to do that if you've missed those. And in the meantime, we're going to look at Romans 9, 6 today. But before we jump into it, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we praise you and we thank you for this day and for uh, the gift that every day is. We thank you for your word, for the Bible, Lord, that you uh, that you give us so that we can know who you are, so that we can know who we are, and especially so that we can know the salvation that you give us through Jesus Christ. Please be with us as we read and study your word today. Uh, help us to understand it by the power of your spirit, and to accept it and receive it. Lord, we pray in this time that we're spending with you that we just strengthen our, our relationship with you, strengthen our faith, and draw us closer to you, and embolden us to share that uh, the good news of Jesus Christ with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's read it. This is Romans 9, verse 6. I'm going to share it with you here. If I can get the right button. This is strange. All right, I am trying to share it. Here we go. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay. All right. So here it is. Romans 9, verse 6. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So we're here in Romans 9, and we're dealing with the question of Israel. Um what is God doing with Israel? Is Israel saved just because they are the, the chosen people of God? Or is there something else going on? And even the question of who is Israel? Is Israel just the people who are uh, physically descended from Abraham? Or is it something different? And Paul has already started to identify that Israel is uh, really about uh, receiving the promise of God that was given through uh, through the, the people of Israel, uh, but it's about receiving the promise, and that not, as he says here, not all who are descended from Israel, that being Jacob, uh, whose name was changed to Israel, not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, because some have received the promise and others have rejected the promise. Now, the question would be then, well, whose fault is that? If there are people who uh, who were born into the people of Israel by, by the physical body, but they are not a part of Israel because they uh, don't believe in Jesus, they don't accept the Messiah, then whose fault is that? Is that God's fault? Did he Was he ineffectual in uh, bringing them in as his, his people, as Israel? Or is it their fault? And so that's really what we're getting here. It says, you know, but it's not as though God's word has failed, and that the language here um, is really kind of an, an ongoing language, so you can think of it as, uh, but by no means is it that God's word has failed and continued, like remains fallen, has, has some, is somehow this ineffectual dead thing that just doesn't do what it seeks to do. And this is, uh, of course, being argued against. Of course not. No, by no means is that the case. God's word is always effective. And we see this in, uh, this is kind of echoing Isaiah. Let me share this with you. Echoing Isaiah 40, verses 7 to 8. 
where it says the grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Now, the word of God is eternal. It's active. However, people can resist it. The word of God, so it's saying here in our Romans passage that the word of God has not failed. You know, the people uh, who heard it, they, they didn't receive and believe it. They are the ones who, who failed. They are the ones who failed to believe it, who failed uh, to receive it as, as true as what God had given them. God's word hasn't fallen. The people have fallen and they have rejected God in and exchanged, as it talked about at the beginning of Romans, exchanged the, the image of God for the image of created things, things that they create with their own hands or even in their own minds. So in other words, God's word always does what it says. God's word is eternal. And so it's not the fault of God's word. It's not as though it were ineffective, as though it was, uh, you know, God just didn't do enough or God just, he didn't make it, uh, make his word good enough to do what it says. It would, it will always do what it says. But if the people reject it, if the people resist it, um, that they are the ones who are just not accepting what God's word is uh, doing for them. And so they are not receiving that blessing. They are not receiving uh, the benefits of the promise that God has given them. But it's not that God's word is, is not able to do it. It absolutely is. And we see this concept uh, very clearly in uh, something that Jesus said in Matthew. So let me share this. <laughs> Excuse me. This is Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. You were not willing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, yeah, so that that's really what what this is talking about, that God was, uh, you know, Jesus wants to gather them. He wants to bring them them into his salvation. His word is effective to do it, but they want nothing of it. And so they resist it and they reject it. And that leaves them in the state that they're in, which we'll talk more about as we uh, continue through Romans 9 through 11, which is really addressing this, this question of Israel. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I, I pray it's been a blessing for you, and we'll continue to go through this, uh, through uh, these sections of, of Romans. Tomorrow we'll be looking at Romans uh, 6 through 13, or starting to, um, in our uh, Sunday service, we're going to be also talking about the same thing. So our Saturday message uh, it kind of gets that, that thought process going, gets us thinking about the Word of God. Um, that we're going to be looking at on Sunday. So we'll be looking at that tomorrow and, and looking at the difference uh, between flesh and faith and how that affects us. And then uh, Sunday, we'll be talking about the, the children of God and who are the children. Of God. So I hope you'll join us for those. And uh, that's it for today. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. God bless.